And so in today's short khatira, I wanted to go over once again the emphasis and the importance of salah because it is always refreshing no matter if we've heard these before. The fact of the matter is that even the best amongst us sometimes will become a little bit melan. Yani, melan means monotonous or become tired of the same routine. And to refresh ourselves of the importance of salah, three simple incidents in the Quran. Each one of which is magnificent in and of itself, but what happens during those incidents shows us the importance of salah. The first of these, we also recited this yesterday or the day before yesterday, where Allah Azza wa Jal chooses Musa and He shows Musa the burning bush. And you all know, the Musa thought it was an actual bush. He's going to go and get some fire for his wife, for his family. And he walks up the mountain, Turi Sayna, and lo and behold, what does he hear? He hears Allah Azza wa Jal speaking to him directly. In the Anarab book, I am your Lord. Akhtartuk, I have chosen you. Fastami' lima yuha. Listen to what I'm about to tell you. Listen, the first time Musa met Allah, the first time Musa spoke with Allah, Allah spoke with him directly as we believe. He's Kalimullah. What is the first message? Innani an Allahu la ilaha illa ana fa'budni wa aqim as salata li dhikri. Right then and there, the number one commandment. Musa is still a shepherd in Midian. He's wandering in the valley of Midian. Musa doesn't know he's a prophet. Musa doesn't know what's about to happen. Allah Azza wa Jal calls him to Turi Sayna. And the first commandment, know that I am your Lord. Innani ana rabbuk. So worship me. Fa'budni. How? Wa aqim as salata li dhikri. Make sure that you establish the salah in order to remember me. This was the first commandment to Musa alayhi salam. Our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, we all know that there was only one time in his entire life where he was taken up to a divine audience with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where for a reason that he didn't understand at the time, Allah azza wa jal called him up to have a meeting with him. A divine meeting. So important was the message that the messenger himself was called to the presence of the divine. No other commandment in our religion, brothers and sisters, no other commandment was revealed in a manner that the messenger is brought up. No. Every other commandment comes down through Jibreel. The command to fast came down. Oh, you will believe fasting is prescribed. Jibreel brought it down. The commandment to give zakah, the commandment to do this and do that, the commandment for property and orphans, the commandment for this and that, the whole Qur'an comes down. There's only one commandment that was so important, the messenger is called up. There's a direct message to be given to you. A message that is so important that you are being granted the one and only time as we know of a divine audience. So Abu Dhar said, did you see your Lord? He said, no, I didn't see him. But what happened? He heard him. Allah spoke with him directly. The Athar tell us that Jibreel went up with him until finally Jibreel stopped and paused. And Jibreel basically said, I don't have permission to go any higher. You go beyond. And so the Prophet ﷺ rose to a level where even Jibreel could not rise to. He rose to a level above any other created living organism. He rose to a level that as far as we know, no other being has ever gone to. But why? What was the message? What is so important that our Prophet is being granted such an auspicious, such a magnificent, unprecedented, unparalleled audience and access. Even Jibreel says, I can't, I don't have the permission. I don't have the past to go beyond this. And so the Prophet goes so high, he goes, I could hear the pen writing on this, on the Lawh al-Mahfuz. I could hear the pens writing. This is how high he went. فَكَانَ قَابَ قَوْسَيْنِ أَوْ أَدْنَى According to one interpretation, there are other interpretations of the verse as well. But the point being, the Prophet ﷺ rose to the highest level. And then what did Allah tell him? We all know, what was the commandment? Allah. To pray regularly. To pray regularly. And we all know that initially Allah Azza wa Jal said to pray 50 times a day. And Allah will that the Prophet ﷺ go back down and meet Musa alayhi salam. And Musa stopped him and say, what did Allah tell you to do? And he said to pray 50 times a day. And Musa said, I have more experience than you. Now Musa alayhi salam, he passed away. And so he has many, many more decades experience. And the people that uh, he was blessed with are different people than, than us. And so they tested Musa very differently than our Ummah tested the Prophet. So he said, I, my people have tested me more than your people and I know people. 
And I know ummas, and your ummah cannot pray 50 times a day. So go back to your Lord and ask Him for takhfif, ask Him for making it less. Now, there is a question here. Surely Allah knew that the salah would be initially, eventually five. Of course, Allah knew that from 50 to 45 to 40 to 35, Allah would reduce it to five. So why go through the whole up and down and up and down? Why go through the whole thing? What's the wisdom behind it? There's two wisdoms. The first of them, we learn directly from the Hadith Qudsi that the Pro Allah Azza wa Himself says, that when the Prophet came back down and Musa said, go back up, he went back up, go back down, literally at least 10 times going back and forth until finally the Prophet says, and when he reached five, he said, Ya Musa, I have haya from my Lord. How many times can I go back and forth, back and forth? I have haya, I cannot go back now. How many times can I go back? And right when he said this, they both heard Allah's voice because the both of them are Kalimullah and the both Allah has spoken to. And Allah Azza wa Jal said that this is my decree, meaning even if you had come, it would not have gone back down. And it's so well that the process of him, right when Allah's decree was, it would be five. That's when he himself stopped going. This is my decree. It is five, but it shall be written as 50. This is the first wisdom, meaning people will get the reward of having prayed 50 times a day, even if they pray five times a day. People will get the reward of having prayed 50 times a day. It is five, but it will be counted as 50. This is the first wisdom. And the second wisdom is to demonstrate that we have only been created for the purpose of salah. Because imagine if we had to pray 50 times a day, this literally calculates out to every 23 something point minutes. Every, literally every 20 something minutes we have to go and stand and pray. Imagine, do the math yourself. 50 times a day in, 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 in a day. If we had to pray, this would literally mean the whole day is just composed of wudu and salah, then do 3-5 minutes of work, wudu and salah. And so there is a spiritual message being given. That وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have only created men and jinn in order to worship me. Your purpose of creation is the salah. And had I legislated it 50, this is why you exist. But in order to make it easy for you, I have reduced it to 5 and you shall get the reward of 50. And so our Lord spoke to Musa and called him to Mount Sina. Our Lord spoke to the Prophet and called him to His Divine Presence. And the both of them were told, that the importance of salah outweighs nothing else. And I said there are three incidents. What is the third one? The third one is the father of both of these prophets and that is Ibrahim alayhi salam. That as he is building this house, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him about salah and he makes a dua about salah. That the salah is intrinsically linked to the first house of worship ever built. The Kaaba is the holiest place on earth. The Kaaba is the Baytullah and the Baytullah here means Allah has honored it by ascribing it to Himself. Anything that Allah ascribes to Himself as ownership, it becomes sacred and blessed. Baytullah, Abdullah, Rasulullah, these are all blessed in their own way, that each of these entities has been ascribed to Allah. So Baytullah, Allah has ascribed this area to Himself as being the holiest place on earth. And it was the first house of worship. And Allah Azza wa Jal told Ibrahim alayhi salam, your job is to call the people to this house and make sure that there are always people. وَأَنْطَهِرْ بَيْتِيَ لِلطَّائِفِينَ وَالْقَائِمِينَ وَالْرُكَّعِ السُّجُودِ وَالْعَاكِفِينَ وَالْرُكَّعِ السُّجُودِ That your job is to call the people to pray over here and do tawaf. And you cleanse it so that only those who are doing tawaf وَالْقَائِمِينَ Standing وَالْرُكَّعِ Doing ruku' وَالسُّجُودِ And in sajda. Around the Kaaba there should only be one of four categories. You are either doing tawaf or you're standing ruku' or sujood which is salah. So important is the salah, it was linked to the Kaaba, And that is why when the Kaaba is being built, what is the dua on the tongue of Ibrahim? What is Ibrahim alayhi salam saying? رَبِّ جْعَلْنِي مُقِيمَ الصَّلَاةِ وَمِنْ ذُرِّيَّتِي This is what his his whole goal is, his whole aim in life. Oh Allah, make me amongst those who never, it says pray by the way. Well, you know this, the Quran never says sallu. Ya amanu sallu. Never. Because sallu is minimal. That's not what Allah is encouraging. No. Aqimu salah. Iqamat as salah. Wajalni muqim as salah. And iqamat as salah means you perfect it. It means you rectify it, you purify it, you construct salah, right? Iqama, you are constructing salah. 
It's not just merely offering the rituals. It's not merely bowing and, and, and prostrating. No, it is perfecting the salah. And so Ibrahim alayhi salam, as he's putting the stones to the Kaaba, his dua on his tongue, in his heart, in his mind, Oh Allah, make me amongst those who pray. Make with my children amongst those who pray. And I've mentioned Ibrahim, I've mentioned Musa, I've mentioned uh, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but Wallahi, every Prophet you can find references. The Prophet Isa Alayhi Salam, the Prophet Isa, when Maryam Alayhi Salam comes back to the city, and Allah has told her, you cannot defend yourself, you have to be quiet. You cannot tell people where this baby comes from. And she comes back and the people surround her. They're going crazy. You were the most righteous woman. You're not married. Your parents were the best of all people. How dare you bring forth this child? We know you're not married. We know you have no, 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 no husband. And Maryam cannot do anything. And so she points and she points. She doesn't know what else to do. And without even her knowledge that this would happen, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala causes the baby to speak. Right? The newborn baby, barely a day old. The little baby, the infant speaks. And what does he say? قَالَ إِنِّي عَبَدُ اللَّهِ أَتَانِيَ الْكِتَابَ وَجْعَلَنِي نَبِيَّ وَجْعَلَنِي مُبَارَكًا إِنَمَا كُنْتُ وَأَوْصَانِي بِالصَّلَاةِ وَالزَّكَاةِ مَا دُمْتُ حَيَّ the first khutbah of Isa ibn Maryam as a baby, as literally a day old, suckling from his mother. Literally the first thing that he says, the first khutbah, I am the messenger of Allah. Allah has given me a book. Allah has made me a prophet. And Allah has commanded me to pray. Can you imagine a newborn baby saying, Allah has told me to pray. Look at the status of the salah. And that is why brothers and sisters, none of us should ever feel that the salah is something that is monotonous or that is becoming ritualistic. No, there is no greater deed on the face of this earth that we can do. There is no ritual worship. And this is unconditional. There is no worship that we can do that is more blessed than salah. Uh, a Bedouin came to the Prophet and said, O Messenger of Allah, what is the most blessed of all good deeds? And the Prophet said, As salatu ala waqtiha, praying at its proper time. And therefore, brothers and sisters, this deed that we're doing is a deed that we should never trivialize. It is the most important deed. It is the deed for which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us. Wa akhru da'awan alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.